Pinnacle Fighting Championship is back in New York, coming to you from the sold-out Seneca Allegheny Resort and Casino. It's BKFC Fight Night, and we will open with three preliminary bouts. Then at the top of the hour, our main card will begin live on the Bare Knuckle TV app, which you can download at BKFC.com. Tonight's feature fight, Eddie Hope versus Dustin Pegg in the welterweight division. The co-main, set for the middleweight division, Connor Tierney versus Jeremiah Riggs. And our main event of the evening, for the BKFC's interim featherweight championship, Jared Grant versus Anthony Reddick. Hey everyone, with Chris Lights Out Lytle, I'm Sean Wheelock. Johnny Bedford is, of course, the reigning BKFC bantamweight champion. He is out through injury, so tonight's main event for the interim BKFC 135-pound title. A real contrast, Chris, in styles and body types. Jared Grant versus Anthony Reddick. Absolutely. Like you said, Johnny Bedford hurt. Wish him a speedy recovery, but nothing short of fantastic for us. He'll be back, I'm sure. However, like you talked about, fantastic matchup tonight for the intern title. Jared Grant, but nothing short of amazing. Really impressed me in his last fight. Travis Thompson's no easy fight. He's been in there with everybody, durable, tough. Jared Grant really put it on him, really made him look bad. We haven't seen anybody do that to Travis. Uh, great fight. However, very different styles you talked about right now. We have Reddick right now. Reddick is an enormous, giant guy for 135 pounds. 79-inch reach wingspan. That's unbelievable. It's going to be totally about who can solve that distance problem. Is Reddick going to be able to keep Jared at bay, or is Jared going to be able to get inside? Whoever is going to solve that is going to win the fight. Chris, you have the fight odds. They are presented by betonline.ag. Absolutely. Jared Grant, a plus 120. That means he is the underdog. If you bet $100, you would win 120. Anthony Reddick is the favorite. You have to bet $150 to win $100. That's what that means. I think it was what happened at the weigh-ins. Everybody saw the enormous height and reach advantage for Reddick that changed the betting odds right there in his favor. Six PKFC events are headed your way over the next two months, all of which you can watch right here on the Bare Knuckle TV app as part of your subscription, which costs just $4.99 per month. On Friday, April 8th, we will be at Intrust Bank Arena in Wichita, Kansas for BKFC 23. Tickets are on sale now at BKFC.com. Saturday, May 7th, it's BKFC Thailand 2. And you can see events in Florida, Montana, and Nebraska as well, all right here on the Bare Knuckle TV app. For more information, go to BKFC.com. Prelim number one on our worldwide free view. We begin at 145 pounds. Here's our Crescent Tools, tail of the tape. Cito Navarro versus Anthony Prater. As you can see here, Sean, the main difference here, Cito has about a four and a half inch reach advantage against Prater. That can be utilized when they keep Prater pay every time. Prater's going to need to step forward to land any punches. He's going to want to pop them each and every time to make sure Prater doesn't get in close to him. BKFC debut for Anthony Prater, veteran of 15 amateur MMA fights, nine AMI kickboxing bouts, told us in training he has been working on fighting off of the ropes, starting in bad positions, and then circling out. Absolutely good advice right there. He says the key to this is be able to push his opponent back. He was very out about it, animate about it. He says he feels like his opponent might be more technical for him, but not as tough as him. He wants to be able to utilize his skills to push his opponent back. Prater, who I've actually commentated in Chael's Sun and Submission Underground, said, I am extremely confident with my grappling. I feel that's going to give me a big advantage in the clinch versus Cito Navarro. Yeah, he wants to utilize the clinch, get in there, do his grappling, use his overhand right when available. Got to make sure he's using the angles, wants to be the more aggressive fighter in this situation. This is the Pro Combat Sports debut for 20-year-old Cito Navarro, 12 years younger than his 32-year-old opponent, Anthony Prater. Navarro, veteran of 12 amateur boxing bouts, prides himself on being very aggressive. He said, I mix high volume with constant movement. Absolutely. Very proud of his ability to slip movements, feints, his volume and pressure. Feels like he's a very clean fighter, but he's dealt with it first in the past, and he feels like he understands how to deal with that, wants to make sure he doesn't let his opponent 
bring him into a brawl this fight. In our fighter meeting, Navarro said of Anthony Prater, he's mainly a brawler. I have to be aware of his wild punches. I have clean punches, clean technique. That's what I will showcase in this bout. To get us started, here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the magnificent Seneca Allegheny Resort and Casino here in beautiful Salamanca, New York. And welcome to BKFC Fight Night New York number two. BKFC Fight Night Freeview begins with five two-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Presented to you by Onnit. Total human optimization. Introducing you first, fighting on the red corner. Tonight he wears black and gray. He stands five feet nine inches tall. His official weight, 136.6 pounds. Tonight, he makes his bare knuckle debut. Fighting out of Redmond, Oregon. Here is Anthony, the apex predator, Prater. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears gold and black. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall. His official weight, 143.6 pounds. Tonight, he also makes his bare-knuckle debut. Fighting out of Worcester, Massachusetts, by way of Tampa Bay, Florida. Here is Slip Cito And our referee in charge of the action, Big Dan Mergliata. Three judges are signed by the Seneca Nation Athletic Commission on the 10-point must system. The fighters up to scratch, 36 inches apart. Round number one, black and gold trunks for Cito Navarro, black and gray trunks for Anthony Prater. Into the clinch, just where Prater told us he wants to be. And those are big body shots by Navarro from the clinch. There's the uppercut with the left hand from Prater. Nasty uppercuts. Nasty uppercuts right there. Landed straight to the body. Good turn in the clinch by Prater. In activity, that's the break from Dan Mergliata. Sporting touch of hands right back to him in the center circle. Prater doing just what he talked about, changing up the stance a lot, trying to confuse his opponent. Almost a guillotine position that'll get the break every time, does so for Mergliata. Oh, nice body work being done right now by Cito. Prater acknowledged the right hook to the body. Prater talking to Navarro. Is that left hand, a left hand again coming forward is Prater. Walking down Navarro. And then a counter down goes Anthony Prater. And that was that body work we've seen right there. He was adamant about the fact he wanted to work the body, and that's exactly what he's doing right here. Mandatory eight from Dan Mergliotto. Navarro right back to the body. Big left hand, another left hand. Half tight club, but Prater cannot hold on. Navarro again to the body. Second knockdown round number one. I don't know if he's going to be able to get up or if he's going to want to get up. He's going to have to be careful. If he continues to hit that body, he's not going to keep going. Yeah, there it is right there. Bergliano looking for an emphatic, yes, I want to continue, that did not come, and the win in his pro combat sports debut for 20-year-old Cito Navarro. Man, that was some fantastic body work we saw right there. He was talking about that, he wanted to work it. Boy, did he ever do that. That was very impressive. Committed to it, paid dividends. happy right now for Cito. He said he moved down to Florida six days a week. The best training camp he's been in has dedicated a lot of his life to being where he is right now. He wants to capitalize on it, and he sure did that. And right here, you see the first knockdown about to take place. Cito really targeted. Oh, good right hand to the body. Just a nice little uppercut dig. Here's the second. That little left hand right there. Just working the body the entire time. Those might not look paper, but trust me, they are. Cito Navarro told us when he was a high school student, he watched BKFC 1 live. That was June 2nd, 2018. He said, this is the sport for me. Well, I'm glad he was watching because that was a fantastic performance. I can't wait to see this guy fight again. We go to Jeff Houston.
Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Big Dan Mergliotta, steps in and calls a stop to the fight at 1 minute 22 seconds into round number one. For your winner by TKO, Slick Cito Navarro! Sean, he, he looked fantastic out there, had a game plan, came out one, worked the body, he did it. 20 years old, can't wait to see this guy fight again. The future is bright. Strong performance in his BKFC and yes, pro combat sports debut for Cito Navarro. Beautiful body work. First off the counter, dropping Anthony Prater. Then Prater trying to snatch the half tie plum to utilize his grappling. But again, big thudding body shots, finishing with the right hand. The winner by way of first round TKO, Cito Navarro defeats Anthony Prater. Welcome to the world of Bare Knuckle TV. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for only $4.99 per month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including unlimited access to the full library of BKFC pay-per-views, behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live Bare Knuckle fights from around the globe. You can access it anywhere you want, anytime you want, instantly on most streaming devices. It's available right now on Bare Knuckle TV. Over 1,000 hours of on-demand content, uncut and uncensored. All here, anytime you want, anywhere you want, for only $4.99 a month. Subscribe now exclusively at BKFC.com. BKFC Fight Night New York, coming to you live from Seneca Allegheny Resort and Casino, is presented by Crescent Tools, Odd Socks, BetOnline.ag, and by Cheddar Token. To the middleweight division, here's our Crescent Tools tale of the tape, Art Driscoll versus Damon Bell. And as you can see here, Sean, it seems like Art Driscoll has a little bit of a reach advantage, three inches, you want to utilize that against Damon Bell, make Damon pay every time he steps in, a little bit of a height advantage as well. This is BKFC bout number two for Damon Bell. He's also had one pro kickboxing match, 11 AMI MMA bouts. Told us he has put a premium on his footwork in this bout. He said his word, I want to float. Great advice right there for himself. One thing that he was adamant about, I don't know if it was from watching the last fight, but now because he but he told me body shots were one thing. He really figured out how important they were in this sport, and I think he's right. Bell also said, I want to keep moving, keep landing counters. I have to pick my power shots. I can't just wing. And in the clinch, body shots everywhere. As you said, Chris, <laughs> body shots. Well, he's learned from his first fight. He says in and out. He wants to be a pressure fighter. He wants to make sure he takes away that space we talked about. His opponent has reach advantage. He wants to pressure his fighter, push him back, take his time to come in, but then get on the outside where he can't continue to get hit. BKFC bout number two for Art Driscoll. He was an NCAA Division III track All-American at Oneonta State University. Has huge confidence in his cardio. Driscoll told us, I want to fight in the pocket. I'm willing to stand and trade. He said he definitely learned last time one thing. He has to keep his hands up, and there's no room for error. He learned that he had a knockdown his last time, but got knocked out the next round because he didn't have his hands up. He wants to correct that this time. Driscoll said, straight punches are my key to victory, and that starts with a constant jab. Yeah, he feels like he is in such good shape. He feels like cardio is going to be his number one key. He wants to wear his opponent out. Back we go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Presented to you by Cheddar Token. 
Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears black and gray. He stands 5 feet 9 inches tall. His official weight, 174.9 pounds. He steps into the squared circle for the second time. Fighting out of Louisville, Kentucky, here is Damon the Demon Bell. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, his official weight 175.6 pounds. He also steps into the squared circle as a bare knuckle fighter for the second time. Fighting out of Cleveland, Ohio by way of Kingston, New York. Here is Art the Berserker Driscoll. And our referee in charge of the action, Brian Miner. The outstanding MMA referee, Brian Miner, making his BKFC debut on this bout. Miner putting both fighters up to scratch. The call of knuckle up, round number one. Solid black trunks for Art Driscoll, black and gray trunks for Damon Bell. And these guys definitely look the part, Sean. Check left hook on the entry from Driscoll. Partially blocked by Bell. There's the jab. Driscoll talked about that, doubling up the jab. 1-1 one, one quickly. Thing that pops out right now, Bell looks a lot more relaxed right now. Bell just missed with the left hook after the right hand. That drew a reaction from this very pro Art Driscoll crowd. Jab to the body from Bell. Measured, respectful start from both fighters. 70 seconds remaining, round number one. You can tell neither fighter really wants to commit to the punch. The problem is when you go in there and you commit, you're open for your own shot. Driscoll again, playing off of the jab. He's kind of pulling that jab out there. He needs to commit to and finish with the two. Hands high and tight for Art Driscoll. You see the fluidity of movement from Damon Bell, something again that he has worked on extensively for this his second bout in BKFC. Man, it looks like he's very happy just to counter right now. Counter with the left hand was Damon Bell. Bell now slightly coming forward, lead left hook, nothing there from Driscoll. Driscoll put that on the elbow, overhand right, nothing there. Okay, five seconds remaining round number one. Driscoll continuing to throw the jab. Now, the same problem with that, he's going to be in a little bit predictable right now. Bell's going to be able to slap that down and count with his own right hand if he's not careful. Final seconds, round number one of this middleweight fight. Now into the clinch. Two very strong 175 pounders. The break from Brian Miner. There is the bell. I thought that was a very good round for Damon Bell. I think he's doing a really good job of just waiting for his time. Waiting for Art Driscoll to throw punches. He's waiting. He's firing his timing out. When he's throwing that jab, he, he's going to look to counter with hard punches. He's not coming back with a long jab. He's coming back with twos and threes. So Art Driscoll's going to have to change up a little bit. Throw some face. Throw some lead hooks. Come with more than one jab and finish with that two, three. He's just kind of flopping that jab out there, being a little bit predictable. Sometimes this first round, Sean, is just get that feeling out process to see if they open up here a little bit more in the second round. As far as Damon Bell, though, I think he has the right strategy right now. Just wait for your opponent and then counter. The only problem is if he gets one through, it's a problem. Art Driscoll's a very strong individual. Round number two. And you see that bounce in the step of Damon Bell. Bell is very fluid right now. Let's go right back to the jab, right hand to follow. And on the left hook from Bell. So sometimes right now, when his opponent throws counters at him, he's kind of putting that jab out. That's a hard oh. jab, and that jab drops our, drops our Driscoll. The late reaction on the jab. Got him in the eye. He's not getting up. 
up at nine. Damon Bell is celebrating. This fight is still continuing. And now a medical timeout. There's Dr. Don Muzi. Like he got him right on the eyelid. Fight's over. This fight is over. That's a medical TKO as Driscoll beat the count and the win for Damon Bell. Cut him right on the eyelid. This like a nice, well-placed punch. Just a hard jab. Caught him right on the eyelid right there. With no gloves, that bare knuckle hits you right in that soft tissue spot. There's not much to stop that from bleeding. That's exactly what happened right there. Credit that man, Damon Bell. Much improved getting his first win in BKFC, and this is his second bout in the promotion. And full credit to Art Driscoll. Taking that jab in the eye, cutting his eyelid. Again, he was up at nine. He beat Brian Miner's count. Miner did correctly call timeout, bringing in Dr. Don Muzi, the chief medical officer for BKFC. Dr. Muzi assessing the cut. Felt that this fight could not safely continue, so that's a TKO physician stoppage win for Damon Bell. Sean, anytime you get a cut on the eyelid right there, they're very hesitant to let it go on. You gotta be very careful that something doesn't heal well and really causes a problem. Stop the fighter from being able to see if it's gonna lead to a lot of problems. We go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, our ringside doctor steps in and calls a stop to this fight at 37 seconds into round number two for your winner by TKO, Damon the Demon Bell. Fantastic win for Damon Bell right there. He looks so relaxed, so much improved from his last fight, Sean. Can't wait to see him fight again. Both fighters having their moments are Driscoll. Said that he wanted to work off the jab, throw straight punches. Driscoll was definitely landing his one. And Damon Bell, the fluidity of movement, pouncing, landing the jab. You see, cutting the left eyelid of Art Driscoll up at nine. And then the position stoppage. The winner, by way of second round TKO, Damon Bell defeats Art Driscoll. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship returns to Wichita, Kansas on Friday, April 8th with two title eliminators. In the main event, Mike the Marine Richmond knuckles up with Dave the Caveman Rickles, both men chasing middleweight gold. In the co-main event, it's a light heavyweight title eliminator as Isaac Doolittle throws hands with Jared Warren. Plus the return of undefeated pro boxer Marciano Hernandez. BKFC 23 on the Bare Knuckle TV app, downloaded at BKFC.com. Sold out tonight in Western New York. We're in Salamanca at Seneca Allegheny Resort and Casino. BKFC Fight Night New York. Chris, you're part of an elite group of fighters who have had bare knuckle bouts in both the UK and the US. Joining that elite group is tonight's fighter in our co-main event, Connor Tierney from Birmingham, England. He is facing Jeremiah Riggs at 175 pounds. Yeah, Sean, I was forced to go over there and fight before it was legal in the States. Now we got this great promotion, great things here. But you got to be honest, you was a very different style over there. You weren't allowed to fight on the inside, really. As soon as you clinched, it was just like traditional boxing. It was over. Very different style. And two-minute rounds, we had people who, when you tie up, you tie up three times a round, the referee breaks you up. There's half the round right there. It makes for a slower pace, a different style of fighting. I've noticed... When people come over from England, they've had problems adapting to this. I feel like when they think, I'm allowed to grab and hit, they focus on that too much. It kind of throws off their game plan, and they haven't had success right now. So it's going to be interesting to see if Connor's been able to work that out, train a little bit, and understand and find the difference. Because if not, he's got a very tough guy, and Jeremiah Riggs just wants to come in and push him around, tie up as much as possible, and wear him down. Our feature fight tonight is at 165 pounds. Two fighters accomplished in bare knuckle, both accomplished in MMA. UFC veteran Dustin Pegg, and we say accomplished with an asterisk, because <laughs> we'll explore that in a moment in BKFC, versus Eddie Hoke, who's 2-0 and in bare knuckle. Yeah, this is a great fight. That's perfect for a feature fight. Hoke's been grimy, dirty inside, just, just being exactly what he wants to be inside, knocking people around. 
understand Albert Reigns being a dirty, nasty, grimy fighter, but it's been very successful for him, and it works in this sport. So he's been fantastic. Now you talk about Peg. His first fight looks fantastic. I was really impressed with what he did. However, he did get the loss. But his problem was he forgot this wasn't MMA. He knocked the guy out twice, and every time he did, he said, I got him. Hit him one more time. I was like, oh, I got to wait for him to get up. He didn't wait for him to get up. Second time he hit him so hard that he hurt him, and his opponent couldn't continue, so that is a loss. But... He really looked good that fight. It was a disqualification loss for Dustin Pegg. We talked about it in our fighter meeting. Obviously mixed emotions. He felt great. He landed two knockdown shots in the first round. But again, his MMA instincts took over. He's a six-fight UFC veteran. A very long and prolific MMA career. We've seen that with other fighters. We saw that with Houston Alexander, a veteran of the UFC in Bellator. Sometimes it just happens. It's not intentional. You just go down, your ground and pound instincts follow. Peg's a great guy. She was super nice, super respectful. Uh, there was no bad blood afterwards. They were both hanging out. It just happens, you know, just something that he's been training for for years. Automatic reaction. Not going to happen again. I guarantee he's going to be very cognizant of the fact that he can't do that. An intriguing women's bout on the card. We're so deep in DKFC at 125 pounds. The depth is now coming at 115 pounds. Charissa Sagala, this will be her fourth fight tonight at BKFC. Three previous at 125. She's going down to her natural MMA weight of 115 against Angela Danzig, the German-born fighter, now based in the United States. Her husband, a contemporary of yours in the UFC, ultimate fighter season six veteran, Matt Danzig. Matt Danzig was a fantastic fighter, so you know his wife has been around the sport. She understands what it takes. When you have a champion living in your house like that with you, it's going to make it a lot easier uh, for this transition. So look forward to watching her. Sagala. She's had been in there at an upper weight class. She finally has a 115-pound weight class, so she's down at her natural weight. She felt like the entire time she was fighting at 125, she was at a disadvantage. A lot of the ladies would, after the weigh-ins, gain a few pounds, but she's still hovering right there around 121. So disadvantage, she's happy to be at her natural weight, and so that should make this a great fight. One more bout coming to you on our free view worldwide live online. Then at the top of the hour, you can watch our main card, BKFC Fight Night New York on the Bare Knuckle TV app. As part of your monthly subscription for just $4.99, you get every Bare Knuckle event live. And we are loaded. Six BKFC events coming your way through the months of April and May. You see next up, Friday night, April 8th, we will be in Wichita, Kansas, BKFC 23. Saturday, May 7th, the return of BKFC Thailand. And we conclude the month of May with BKFC Fight Night in Omaha, Nebraska. For more information, go to BKFC.com. Again, every event live right here as part of your monthly subscription on the Bare Knuckle TV app. Here's our Crescent Tools tale of the tape for this bout at 175 pounds. Christian Torres versus Stanislav Grosu. And Sean, I know this is going to feel like the theme of the night, but huge reach advantage right now for Grosu. He has a seven inch reach advantage against Christian Torres. Grosu's going to want to stay on the outside. Pepper Torres with jabs, uppercuts. Look, every time Torres has to step inside, which is where he's going to want to be against a taller fighter to throw those punches, but Grosu's job is to keep him back and make him pay every time he takes one step forward. The Moldovan-born, Sterling, Virginia-based Stanislav Grosu. This is his second bout in BKFC. He's also had two pro MMA bouts, 17 amateur Muay Thai fights. Grosu said, I want to stay long. I want to utilize my full reach advantage in this fight. He also said he realized just how important defense is, important not to get hit. Really wants to make sure he's working the body and make sure he's not throwing as hard a punch as he has to be faster. Precision is more important than power, this he says. Christian Torres made his BKFC debut this past November. He defeated Art Driscoll by second round TKO. And once here you see Christian Torres does something we absolutely love, coming off the canvas to get the win. You can tell he's a hard hitter. Look at those fantastic shots right there. But let's not forget, Sean, he was hurt early in this fight. Thought they might stop it. Comes back in the second round. Continues to throw hard punches right now. Very excited to be fighting next to his home. Excited fighter. Can't wait to be back in the ring right now. Can't wait to see this fight.
Christian Torres, you just saw his win, 1-0 in BKFC. He's also had one pro MMA fight, one pro boxing bout. He is ambidextrous, Torres said, most likely I'm going to start right-handed off the scratch line and then switch to southpaw, and I'll keep moving back and forth throughout this fight. Torres said what he is really focused on in training is improving his punching power. Definitely wants to do that. Another thing, he wants to make sure he doesn't rush in this time. Last time he rushed in with his hands down, got knocked down. Wants to keep his hands up as he's going in. Focus on making sure that he's avoiding these punches as he's working his way in. Because he knows that's exactly what's going to happen in this fight versus a much taller fighter. We go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next five. Tonight, scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the middleweight division, presented to you by BetOnline.ag. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears black and red. He stands six feet two inches tall. His official weight, an even 175 pounds. He steps into the squared circle for the second time. Fighting out of Sterling, Virginia, by way of Bruteni, Moldova. Here is Stanislav Grosu. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears red and blue. He stands 5 feet 8 inches tall. His official weight at even 176 pounds. He stands undefeated in the squared circle at 1-0. and Fighting out of Endicott, New York. Here is Christian Torres. And our referee in charge of the action, Big Dan Mergliata. Torres said with the height and reach advantage of Stanislav Grosu, 6'2 to his 5'8, I have to go over and under his long straight punches. Round number one. Quick start off the scratch line for Christian Torres in the red and blue trunks. Black and red trunks for the Moldovan, now based in Virginia, Stanislav Grosu. Both guys said they really learned a lot from their first fight. We'll see who learned more. Big right hand through it, naked to Grosu without the jab. There's a hard left hand that lands from Grosu. Off the jab. Something Another right hand. Something that surprised me was Torres and he didn't seem to have much respect for the punching power of the Moldavian. But feels like he hits really hard to me. Left hand again from Grosu. Clubbing right hand just over the air. That looked like it kind of hurt Torres a little bit. Grosu, another right hand. Big shots overhand right on the counter from Torres. Pulling himself back to the center circle. Grosu continuing off of that long straight jab, establishing that reach advantage. Straight right hand. Now Torres into the clinch. Half time plumb and down goes Christian Torres. And that time plumb and landed those uppercuts. And Torres is hurt bad. That fight is over, so. Torres cannot beat the 10 count. Game set match, Stanislav Grosu. And that was that power. That was that power we talked about. Every time I saw him throw punches, I thought he was very heavy-handed. It really shocked me when Torres says he didn't feel like he hits hard. I bet he's changing that team now. Grosu, dominant just as he told us he wanted to be from range, then came to the inside, snatched a half tie club, and finished Christian Torres. And people don't understand how devastating these inside punches can be when you have nowhere to move your head like that. Look at those uppercuts right there. Usually your head can back up a little bit. It can react to those punches. But when you're pulling those into those uppercuts, like a double whammy right there. BKFC win number one for Stanislav Grosu with emphasis. That's a win against a quality opponent, Christian Torres, who again came in 1-0 in BKFC. I mean, uh, let's not forget the first time Grosu fought. He fought a very tough fight. He gets a very tough fighter and looked fantastic. Almost had the knockdown. It, against Dave Mundell, BKFC Fight Night Tampa last November. 15 punches landed for Grosu right there. 45%. Looked fantastic out there. I think he's a very heavy-handed individual. Get a reminder at the top of the hour, our main card will begin. Eight fights in total. The way to watch worldwide is on the Bare Knuckle TV app. We go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Our referee in charge, Big Dan Mergliata, reaches the count of 10 at one minute and one second into round number one for your winner by KO, Stanislav Grosso. Sean, he looked much more comfortable, more relaxed. His feet were under much more of this fight. I think he's right. He learned a lot of his first fight, and the sky's the limit for this guy. Stanislav Grosu said, I'm focusing more on speed, less on power. The reality is he showed speed, and he showed power. Stanislav Grosu staying on the outside, and then from the half-tie plum and those huge uppercuts, finishing on the inside. The winner by way of first round knockout, Stanislav Grosu defeats Christian Torres. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship returns to Wichita, Kansas on Friday, April 8th with two title eliminators. In the main event, Mike the Marine Richmond knuckles up with Dave the Caveman Rickles, both men chasing middleweight gold. In the co-main event, it's a light heavyweight title eliminator as Isaac Doolittle throws hands with Jared Warren. Plus the return of undefeated pro boxer Marciano Hernandez. BKFC 23 on the Bare Knuckle TV app, downloaded at BKFC.com. Three fights, three finishes <laughs> on our BKFC Fight Night New York free view. You're with us watching live worldwide. Again, at the top of the hour, just under 20 minutes from now, our main card begins. Eight fights in total from the sold-out Seneca Allegheny Resort Casino in western New York. We're in the city of Salamanca. You can watch it right now on the Bare Knuckle TV app. It's the best deal in combat sports. All BKFC events free of charge. Just $4.99 per month, and you also get our full Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship archives. Chris, a really intriguing main event. This is for the BKFC interim 135-pound title, Jared Grant versus Anthony Reddick. Interim because the reigning champion, Johnny Bedford, is currently out through injury. That's this interim title fight, but it does not change the status of any way of the dominant Johnny Bedford. Yeah, Johnny Bedford's been fantastic. I was really looking forward to him fighting Jared Grant because of how good Jared Grant has been. It's not going to happen right now. We just got to set this up for the future. You've got a lot of guys who are really fighting for this position, wanting to fight Johnny Bedford. Both these guys have been very, but just nothing short of fantastic, just in different ways. We talked about Reddick having that long length, man. Very difficult for anybody in this weight class to go against a guy who has a 79-inch reach advantage and knows how to use it. He definitely knows how to use it. But Grant, on the other hand, has been very impressive with his ability to not get hit. Very slick, very technical out there. Uh, this fight is about one thing and one thing only. He could ever impose their will as far as the distance. If Grant's able to get inside, I think he's going to do fantastic. If Riddick's able to keep him outside, it's going to be hard for Grant to land a punch. As a kid, Tommy Hearns was one of my favorite fighters. I know he was one of your favorites as well. Six foot three, a world champion, 147 pounds. Anthony Reddick is six foot three. Tonight he's fighting at 135 pounds. Unbelievable. I was fortunate enough I had a boxing match. Hearns was there, and I was amazed when I stood next to this guy how tall he was. Like, how did you ever make 147? Uh, big frame, long. So I understand that, but I mean, Reddick fighting at 135, that's unbelievable. It's going to be hard to solve that matrix when you have that long jab and you know how to use it. Very difficult. Derek Grant has got his work cut out for him, but so far he's proven he's able to do it. That's our main event, our co-main event at 175 pounds from Birmingham, England. Connor Tierney versus the fighter who made a great BKFC debut at BKFC Fight Night Jackson in January. Many of you watched it live right here on the Bare Knuckle TV app. He took out Eric Thompson in round number one. Tierney versus Riggs, I think, sets up the winner to move forward rapidly at 175 pounds. Absolutely. I mean, Tierney, great pedigree. He's got a lot of hype behind him right now. Champ over in England. Has more experience right now at bare knuckle than does Riggs. However, it's a different style right now. We've already talked about it. Um, I've done both. I can tell you very different. It's not the same. Fighting over here at BKFC, much different. You can have a lot more tools. It's different when you're restricted over there, and every time they tie up, you have to let go with straight punching. This is not just straight punching. This isn't bare knuckle boxing. This is bare knuckle fighting. Big difference right here, and people realize it because you have great guys in MMA come in, and they dominate high-level boxers sometimes. You just really never know, so totally different style. I, 
I don't even know what's going to happen this way. I can't wait to watch the Mitchell main event because it's really going to see exactly are they able to learn what's going on over in England, adapt and come over here and make this something they can compete in. We will open our main card at the top of the hour in the heavyweight division. These two fighters genuinely do not like each other, and there is a lot of backstory. Zach Kalmas versus Kyle McElroy. Part of the backstory is that when Kyle McElroy made his BKFC debut against Chris Jensen, in his corner was Zach Kalmas. <laughs> now his opponent is Zach Kalmas, cornering Zach Kalmas. Why it's Chris Jensen? Yeah, so much going on there. I don't even know what to say. You know, there's a lot of a lot of ins, a lot of outs, but. Yeah, definite bad blood. You know, you talk to Zach, he's like, I don't understand what's going on, why this guy has a problem with me, why he's talking bad about me, my friends, people who know me. I'm tired of this. I'm trying to stay unemotional, but maybe that's a game plan. Make somebody emotional, but some you never know. Some guys fight better emotional. Some guys fight worse. If you can get in their head, that's a great thing, but there's a few guys, I know George State here in particular, if you get in there and try and get in their head, they fight way better. So we'll see right now what, what happens with Zach, if he fights better, if he fights worse. We gain new fans every event. If you're brand new to the wonderful sport of Bare Knuckle and the phenomenal promotion of BKFC, we are glad to have you. We are just getting started tonight from New York. BKFC Fight Night. Three prelim bouts on our worldwide free view and three finishes again. Our main card, eight bouts in total, including our main event title fight for the interim BKFC Bantamweight strap. Jared Grant facing in this Final in this final fight of the night, Anthony Reddick, five foot seven versus six foot three. You can watch it live worldwide on the Bare Knuckle TV app. Chris Lights Out Lytle, Jeff Houston, Brian Sosha, myself, Sean Wheelock. We'll see you at the top of the hour. Welcome to the world of Bare Knuckle TV. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for only $4.99 per month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including unlimited access to the full library of BKFC pay-per-views, behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live Bare Knuckle fights from around the globe. You can access it anywhere you want, anytime you want, instantly on most streaming devices. It's available right now on Bare Knuckle TV. Over 1,000 hours of on-demand content, uncut and uncensored. All here, anytime you want, anywhere you want, for only $4.99 a month. Subscribe now exclusively at BKFC.com. Tonight only, you'll receive 30% of all Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship merchandise when you use the promo code BKFCNY2 at BareKnuckleShop.com. There's a wide array of items, colors, and styles to choose from with sizes in women's, men's, and kids. Place your order now at BareKnuckleShop.com. Use the promo code BKFCNY2 at checkout to get 30% off your entire purchase.